welcome to the KAU lecture series. We all think about investing our hard-earned money. A businessman or a farmer will have different opportunities for investing their scarce resources, including money or land. Think about a farmer who is having diverse options for growing different crops. Since the resources are scarce or limited, the farmers or businessmen have to choose among the different investment opportunities. Here comes the importance of investment appraisal. In this lecture, we will be learning how to evaluate a project or in other words, how to carry out the financial appraisal of a project, the different methods of evaluating or appraising a project and the estimation and interpretation of the undiscounted and discounted measures of project worth. First, we will come to investment. What is investment? Investment refers to the addition of durable and income generating permanent assets to a business. There are four types of investments in agriculture. They are one, point input and point output. Think about investing on cash arena or teak. We make the investment at the time of planting and we will be getting the returns once, maybe after many years. The second one is point input and continuous output. For example, digging a well or land reclamation and development. While digging a well, the investment is made once and the returns or output from digging the well will be obtained for many years. The same is the case with land reclamation and development. The third type of investment is continuous input and point output. Example, sheep or goat rearing for meat purpose. In sheep or goat rearing, we have to incur costs on inputs continuously and the output will be obtained once at the end. So that's why it is called as continuous input and point output. The fourth type of investment is continuous input and continuous output. Example, plantation crops, orchards or perennial crops. In the case of plantation crops or perennial crops, once these trees or palms reach the bearing age, which may be three to seven years, then we will obtain continuous output and income. That's why it is called as continuous input and continuous output. Next, we will come to a project. What is a project? Project is an activity on which capital resources are spent to create a productive asset for realizing benefits over time. A project will have a specific starting and specific end points for achieving a specific objective. Project is an activity on which we spend money in expectation of returns. So we have to remember that a project should be measurable in terms of costs incurred and the returns obtained. Investment analysis or project evaluation or appraisal is used to know the attractiveness of a proposed investment. The objective of project appraisal is to compare the costs and benefits and to find out whether the economic activity or project is profitable or rather feasible. If the investment is made by a farm, the appraisal of that project gives the effect of that investment on farm income or it estimates the returns to the capital engaged. The investment analysis is projected over the useful life of the project. What are the parameters needed to carry out the project appraisal? One, the life of the project or the lifespan of the project. The economic lifespan refers to the amount of time an asset is in service before its replacement is more advantageous economically than the continued maintenance that will be required to keep it in service. The second parameter required is cost of investment. 
the fixed investment that is the amount spent on capital assets like land building machines wells and pump sets is what is coming in this category investment on capital assets involves a longer period of time then we need to know about the operational and the maintenance cost these are costs incurred on seeds feed fertilizer labor we can say that it is the operating investment investment in operating expenses occurs within one production cycle or within a year or sometimes less the fourth parameter is gross returns generated over the life period of the project this is given by the cash flow statement or the cash flow it is the year wise statement of costs benefits and net revenue of a project over the life period there will be differences in the timing of expenses and the associated returns the fifth parameter is salvage value or junk value it is the worth of a depreciable asset at the end of its useful life depreciable asset is an asset used for generating income and has a useful life of more than a year and gradually reduces in value over time so we can say that junk value is the terminal value of a depreciable asset the salvage value or the junk value of the assets at the end of the lifetime if any should be treated as a benefit in the last year of the project we have to remember that investment analysis is important and at the same time difficult because the resources are limited there are possibilities for alternative uses of these scarce resources different projects have different payoffs or returns and different projects will have different life spans what are the steps in investment analysis the first step is searching for profitable investment opportunities some investment opportunities are obvious and require little effort to search such as the need to replace worn out parts of a tractor or a farm equipment the farm investment opportunities generally include maintenance and replacement of depreciated capital items adoption of a cost reducing technology expansion of output in existing enterprises so if you have three cows if you are thinking about increasing the number of cows to 10 that is an example for expansion of output in existing enterprises expansion of output through the addition of new enterprises if you have a dairy unit and if you are planning to add to it a poultry unit that is the example for the expansion of output through the addition of new enterprises then the next requirement is the determination of capital or the determining the capital requirement the cost of initial investment and operational and maintenance cost over the economic life span of the investment or project constitute the capital investment the next one is computation of cost of capital which takes into account the availability of funds in capital budgeting or investment analysis a discount rate which is the cost of capital is selected the discount rate is the required rate of return from an investment to the investor or the farmer as such the discount rate we can say that is the opportunity cost of the investment to the farmer that is the opportunity cost of capital for any investment alternative is the rate at which the capital can earn in its next best alternative use so discount rate is the opportunity cost of capital which is the minimum rate of return to be obtained for justifying the investment usually for convenience the interest rate offered by credit institutions is taken as the discount rate and usually it is taken as 10 to 12% per annum then we need to find out the method for recognizing the future cash flows 
and the time value of money. While estimating the profit or net income, time is not brought into consideration if the expenses and returns are in the same production cycle which is within a year. Capital investments in agriculture are made in different periods. That means the costs and returns are spread over time. So different investment opportunities must be weighed for different lengths of time with respect to costs and returns. Costs incurred at one point in time cannot be compared with the validity of returns forthcoming at a later date. Here comes the recognition of time value of money. What is time value of money? We have to remember that money has got an earning power. There is earning potential for money by being invested in an economic activity or getting deposited in a bank. Interest from deposit in a bank is the opportunity cost. Interest rate serves as the pricing mechanism for the time value of money and it reflects an investor's time preference for money. So interest rate can be considered as an exchange price between present and future cash flows. So compounding and discounting are the primary tools for comparing the value of money received at different points of time. The basic idea of compounding and discounting is that a rupee received now does not necessarily have the same value to a person as a rupee to be received a year from now. An individual's choice of a particular allocation of money over time is called his or her time preference. So as a simplifying assumption, a person's time preference is assumed to be measurable at some rate of interest. Thus, one rupee today exchanges for one plus i rupee at the end of period one in the future. So what is compounding? Compounding is the process of finding the future value of a present amount. So future value is equal to present value into one plus interest rate the whole raised to the number of years where the one plus i is the compounding factor. One plus i is the compounding factor. So when we come to the discounting, which is the opposite of compounding, it means one rupee payment made in period one in the future exchanges for one by one plus i rupee now. So discounting is the process of finding the present value of a future cash flow account. So present value is equal to future value by 1 plus i the whole raised to n. So 1 by 1 plus i the whole raised to n is called the discounting factor. When we consider the time value of money, we are taking into account the effects of time and interest rate on present and future cash flows. The important variables determining the present and future values of a single payment or a series of payments are the number of conversion periods or years or rather the project period and the magnitude of the interest rate per year. Both factors interact to determine the total effects of discounting or compounding on the present or future values. At lower interest rates, the number of years has only a little effect on both present and future values. There are two categories of measures to assess the worthiness of an investment, namely the undiscounted and the discounted measures. The undiscounted measures don't take into consideration the time value of money but simply it will compare the cost and returns and rank the project. In other words, in undiscounted measures, the cash flows of the investment are not discounted to estimate the present worth of the future cash flow. The undiscounted measures 
are ranking by inspection, payback period, proceeds per rupee of outlay, average annual proceeds per rupee of outlay, and average income on cost. Let us learn the undiscounted measures one by one. The first measure is ranking by inspection. We can decide on whether a project should be accepted over another by looking at the investment cost and the net value of incremental production or returns. Here we have two instances. With the same investment, two projects produce the same net returns for a period, but one continues to earn longer than the other. For the same investment, the total net returns may be the same, but one project has more of the flow earlier in the time sequence. But there are limitations. The major limitation of this uh, method, the ranking by inspection, is that it doesn't adequately consider the timing of the proceeds. The second undiscounted measure is payback period. Payback period refers to the period of time required for the return from an investment to repay the sum of the original investment. It is the length of time from the beginning of the project until the net returns from the project reach the total amount of the capital investment. For example, a rupee 50,000 investment that returned 25,000 per year would have a two-year payback period. Shorter payback periods are preferred to longer ones, other things being equal. The method is often used because it is easy to understand and apply. Payback period is a simple technique of ranking projects based on the actual period of time in which one can get back the total investment. There are serious limitations and qualifications for the use of payback period because it does not properly account for risk, financing or other important considerations such as the opportunity cost. It is generally agreed that this tool for investment decision should not be used in isolation. When we have the initial cash outlay and assume a constant cash inflows, the payback period is given as the ratio of the total investment made in the project to the net cash revenue or the net cash revenue per annum. So it is the ratio between the total investment made in the project and the net cash revenue. It fails to consider the earnings after the payback period. So what we earn after the payback period is not considered in this measure. Similarly, it doesn't adequately take into consideration the timing of proceeds or it fails to account the time value of money. It also lays too much emphasis on liquidity and risk. The third undiscounted measure is proceeds per rupee of outlay. It is the total net value of incremental production divided by the total amount of investment or we can say proceeds per rupee of outlay is the ratio of net value of production and the capital cost or investment. The limitations of proceeds per rupee of outlay as a measure of uh, uh, assessing investment is that it fails to consider the differences in the timing of proceeds or it ignores the time value of money. The fourth undiscounted measure is average annual proceeds per rupee of outlay. It is the average net value of production divided by the total amount of investment. So first, we need to find out the average annual proceeds per rupee of outlay. That will be obtained as the ratio of average net value of production and the investment cost or the capital where the average net value of production is obtained as the ratio of net value of production and 
the number of annual cash flows or the number of years. The limitations of this method is that it ignores the recovery of capital over the life of the investment and understates the returns. It ignores the time value of money. Since the return is calculated on an annual basis, this method introduces a bias towards short-term investment as compared to investment yielding over a longer period of time. The fifth undiscounted measure is that average income on cost. It is the average net value of production less depreciation divided by the capital cost. It is expressed in percentage terms. So this is obtained as the difference between the average net value of production and depreciation has to be computed first and this has to be divided by the capital cost. So depreciation is obtained as the ratio of the capital cost and the number of annual cash flows. The limitation of this method is that it fails to consider the difference in the timing of the proceeds. You can see what are the major drawbacks of these undiscounted measures. For the same data of the project, we get different rankings when we use different methods. That means these measures are inconsistent and they are also incompatible. We cannot use all of them together for ranking different projects. So for the same data, if we use these methods, we get different rankings and it shows the inconsistency and the incompatibility of these measures. Another drawback is that it does not take into account the time value of money. Now we come to the discounted measures. The discounted measures of project worth or investment analysis, they consider the time value of money while evaluating the costs and benefits of a project. In these methods, costs and benefits are compared not based on the absolute money value, but based on their present worth and present value. Discounting is essentially a technique by which one can reduce the future benefit and cost streams to their present worth. The discounting is based on the principle that the present values are better than the same values in the future and the earlier returns are better than that of the later ones. The basic idea underlined in the discounted measures is that money has a time value. As the money can be put to alternative uses, it has an opportunity cost. Interest is to be paid on borrowed funds. Thus, an individual's preference for money through time is called time preference. Once the individual decides to invest rather than spend or to become an entrepreneur rather than a consumer, he should never accept less than the market rate of interest. The interest rate used to discount or compound sums of money should be at least as large as the current market rate of interest, which can be taken as the opportunity cost of capital. The depreciation is automatically taken care of in the computation process. There are three discounted measures of project worth. They are the net present worth, NPW or NPV, the benefit cost ratio, BCR, and the internal rate of return, IRR. First, we will learn the net present worth. Net present worth is often referred to as the net present value. It is the difference between the sum of the discounted benefit stream and the sum of the discounted cost stream, or we can say that it is the difference between the sum of the present worth of benefits and the sum of the present worth of costs. The NPV or NPW of a project is obtained by deducting the discounted costs from the discounted benefits or by discounting the net benefits from the projects. The costs and benefits are discounted at the opportunity cost of capital for each year. So net present worth is sigma, 
t equals 1 to n bt minus ct divided by 1 plus i the whole raised to n where bt is the benefit in each year ct is the cost in each year and t is 1 to n that is the number of years i is the interest or the discount rate if the net present worth is positive then the project is financially feasible for a project to be acceptable or feasible the net present worth should be positive the second discounted measure is the benefit cost ratio it is the ratio obtained when the present worth of the benefit stream is divided by the present worth of the cost stream it is the ratio of the sum of the discounted benefit stream and the sum of the discounted cost stream bcr is equal to sigma t equals 1 to n bt divided by sigma i equals 1 to n ct divided by 1 plus i the whole raised to n so bt is the benefit in each year ct is the cost in each year t is i equals 1 to n that is n is the number of years i is the interest or discount rate to compute the benefit cost ratio the opportunity cost of capital may be used as the discount rate so we have to remember that the ratio that is the benefit cost ratio is computed not by discounting the total cost and the total benefit over the lifetime of the project but by discounting the cost and benefit for each year then finding out the sum of the discounted costs and benefits and then finding out the ratio of the total discounted benefits and total discounted costs for a project to be acceptable the benefit cost ratio must be greater than or equal to 1 so it will be greater than or equal to 1 only when the sum of the discounted benefit stream is greater than the sum of the discounted cost stream the third discounted measure is the internal rate of return the internal rate of return is the measure of the earning capacity of a project it is also called as the yield on investment it is defined as the rate of discount which makes the present worth of benefits and costs equal otherwise the discount rate that makes the net present worth or the discounted net benefit stream or incremental cash flow equal to zero it is the maximum interest rate that a project could pay for the resources used if the project is to recover its investment and operating costs and still break even IRR is also called the marginal efficiency of capital the computation of IRR can be done by two methods one is trial and error method in this method the net present worth is computed at different rates of discount until a zero value is obtained but it will be time consuming the second method is interpolation method the rule for interpolating the value of IRR lying between two discount rates a lower one giving a negative NPV and a higher one giving a positive NPV is IRR is equal to the lower discount rate plus the difference between the discount rates multiplied by the present worth of cash flow at the lower discount rate divided by the absolute difference between the present worth of the cash flow at the lower and higher discount rates for a project to be feasible the IRR should be greater than the interest rate or discount rate or the opportunity cost of capital to summarize the discounted measures when the benefit cost ratio is greater than one that means the NPW is positive and the IRR is more than the interest rate 
the project is feasible. When the benefit cost ratio is equal to 1, that means net present worth is 0 and IRR is equal to the interest rate, the feasibility is marginal. And the third case, when the benefit cost ratio is less than 1, that means the net present worth is negative and IRR is less than the interest rate, the project is not feasible. IRR is preferred because it is an unambiguous estimate, consistent, unique, accounts for the time value of money and has wider applicability. Let us learn the undiscounted measures with some examples. We have four projects, project 1, 2, 3 and 4. For all of them, the initial investment or the capital investment is 20,000 rupees. And the net value of production or the returns are different for each of the project. We can take the first undiscounted measure that is ranking by inspection and any person who is looking at this cost or the capital cost, initial investment cost and the net value of production will rank project 4 as the first rank and second rank will be given for project 3, third rank for project 2 and fourth rank for project 1. That is ranking by inspection, that is simple. So if you look at the second uh, undiscounted measure that is payback period. Payback period is the number of years required for the project to pay back the capital or the investment made. So the first two projects at the end of third year the project is paying back the initial investment that is 20,000. So projects 1 and 2 will can be ranked as pro 1. So both the projects will get rank 1 because both of them will pay back the investment at the end of third year. Whereas project 3 is ranked 3 and project 4 is ranked 4. If you come to the third undiscounted measure that is proceeds per rupee of outlay and what is the returns or the net value of production per rupee of capital or per rupee of investment. So the investment is same in all these cases, 20,000 rupees. But the returns or the net value of production is different. And it is highest for project 4. So project 4 gets the first rank. Project 3 gets the second rank. Project 2 will be getting the third rank. And project 1 will be ranked 4. Next is the fourth undiscounted measure, the average annual proceeds per rupee of outlay. And we will be taking into consideration the number of years of the project also or the number of years the project is yielding the returns. That is also taken into consideration. So in this case, project 1 is ranked 1, project 4 is ranked 2, project 3 is ranked 3 and project 2 is ranked 4. So this is the problem with uh, undiscounted measures. If we use these undiscounted measures, each of the measure will rank the project differently. Let us see the case of uh, the discounted measures with an example. Here, the first column, that is column A, it is giving the number of years. This project is for 10 years. Column B, it gives the total cost. And column C is the total benefit. Column D is given as net benefit. We will get the net benefit by subtracting the total cost from the total benefit. So this cell is, is equal to total benefit minus total cost. Then we have to keep the cursor here and drag it down. So this column is total cost minus total benefit minus total cost. The next column is discount factor. So we get the discounted cost or the discounted benefit or the discounted net benefit by discounting the benefit with the discount factor. So that is cost by 1 plus i the whole raise to t. So cost by 1 plus i the whole raise to t is same as cost into 1 by 1 plus i the whole raise to t. 
this 1 by 1 plus i the hold raise to t is called as the discount factor. So we are going to find out the discount factor 1 by 1 plus i the hold raise to t separately and multiply it with the cost benefit and net benefit to get the discounted cost, discounted benefit and the discounted net benefit. So the discount factor is obtained as 1 divided by 1 plus i. Here i is 12 percent that is 12 percent is 0 0.12 raised to in the first year we have to raise it to 1. So instead of putting it 1 I am taking this cell reference that is 2 in column A that is 1. So then if I put enter I get 0.893. So this is the value of the discount factor for the first year if the discount factor is 12 percent that is 1 by 1 plus i that is 0 0.12 raised to n that is 1 here. Then we have to drag it down so we will get for different years. So if I, if I click on the year uh, ninth year it is obtained as 1 by 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to a10, a10 is 9 so it is the ninth year. Now the discount factors we have obtained, we get this column discounted cost now, it is equal to the total cost into the discount factor. So I multiply this, then it is the, it is the discounted, discounted cost. If I click on this, we can, we can see that this cell is the product of total cost and the discount factor. So that is called as the discounted cost for year 1. So if I keep the cell, uh, the uh, cursor here and drag it down, I will get for all the years. If I click on the last value, so the last value is the discounted cost at 12 percent. The next column, the discounted benefit, the first cell, cell is obtained as total benefit into the discount factor. Here the total benefit is 0, so the value is 0. So I keep the cursor here and drag it down, I get the uh, discounted benefit for each of the year. It is the product of benefit and the discount factor. Then the next column, the discounted net benefit, it is obtained as the product of net benefit and the discount factor, discount factor. So here we, we are getting the discounted net benefit, keep the cursor here and drag it down, we get the discounted net benefit. So if you remember the, the formula for benefit cost ratio or net present worth, if you take the case of benefit cost ratio, it is the sigma i equals 1 to n. That means you have to take all the years and first you have to discount that is b by 1 plus i the whole raise to t and c by 1 plus i the whole raise to t. So each of the year cost and benefit are to be discounted separately and then we need to find out the sum. So if we come to the discounted cost column that is f, find out the sum of these values. So the sum of all these values, that is what is sigma i equals 1 to t. So this is, this is the sum of discounted cost and uh, you want to find out the sum of the discounted benefit, you add all these. You have discounted already, now you have to sum it. Then this is the sum of the discounted net benefit. This is the sum of the discounted net benefit. So we are going to find out the benefit cost ratio. So we have already seen that. Benefit cost ratio is the ratio of the sum of the discounted benefit and the sum of the discounted cost. So the sum of the values in column G that is 85359, 85359 divided by the sum of the discounted cost 52692 the cell that is F12, the value is uh, uh, 
a benefit cost ratio if you increase the decimals it is 1.6 so what is the net present worth net present worth is the difference between the sum of the discounted benefit and the sum of the discounted cost so it is 85359 minus 52692 so it is 32667 so we have calculated the benefit cost ratio and the the net present worth so if you if you look here what we find is the net present worth is same as the sum of the discounted net benefit so this value is same as the net present worth 32667 so what we have to remember is if you discount the cost separately and if you discount the benefit separately and then sum or add these values and find out the difference we will get net present worth and if you find out the net benefit that is benefit minus cost and then discount it and add what we get is same as the net present worth so this is what is the benefit cost ratio and the net present worth now we need to find out the irr so irr is the discount rate i which makes the net present worth equal to zero so if the net present worth has to become zero the discounted or the sum of the discounted benefit should be equal to the sum of the discounted cost let us uh, try for a value that is a discount factor 20% first we need to find out the discount factor discount factor is 1 by if you remember we did for 12 12% 1 1 1 1 1 it is 1 that is 20% is 0.2 raised to the first year that is we have to take the cell reference for the first year that is a2 this is the discount factor for uh, it is for uh, 20% then let us drag it we will get the discount factor for all years so the last value is 1 by 1 plus i the whole raise to n here the n is 10 the cell reference is a11 now already we have seen if we discount the cost and the benefit separately add them and find the difference we get net present worth or we find out the benefit minus cost and discount and then add also we will get the net present worth now our interest is we need to find out the i value or the discount rate which makes the discounted net benefit equal to or then or the net present worth equal to zero so here after we need to discount only the net benefit so the net benefit is discounted as so the net benefit is this column d into we need to multiply with the new discount factor that is 20 so then let us drag it keep the cursor here drag it let us reduce the decimals uh, then so here what happens let us find out the sum of these values to know whether it has become zero let us find out the sum no it is still positive then it is now 16000 so let us try for another discount factor 40% so this discount factor we need to find out 1 by 1 plus 40% it is 0.4 raised to n we have to raise raise it with respect to the first one the first year that is one then let us drag it these are the discount factors for Uh, 40% these are the discount factors for this column we get for 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 40% 
Now let us find out the discounted net benefit at 40%. This is obtained as net benefit into the discount factor at 40%. Then let us keep the cursor here, drag it, we get for every year. Let us find out the sum of these values, whether they are still positive or negative, we need to find out. If we add it, it is negative. So remember, what we, have, what we did now is, for a discount factor 12, the net present worth is 32,667. For the discount factor 20, the net present worth is 16,713. But for a discount factor 40, the net present worth is close to 15, minus 15. That means the discount factor which makes the net present worth zero is in between 20 and 40 and it may be close to 40. So we have a formula that is the interpolation formula for the finding out the IRR that uh, we studied while uh, I was discussing about that uh, measure, those measures. So we have the formula for finding out IRR. This is the formula for finding out the IRR. So this is equal to lower discount rate. So what is our lower discount rate? It is 12%. The discount rate which uh, gave us, uh, it is 12%. So let us take 12, lower discount rate is 12% plus the difference between the discount rates. That is 40 minus 12, we need to find out 40 minus 12, that is higher discount rate minus lower discount rate into present value at lower discount rate. What is the net present worth at lower discount rate? We need to, that is 32,667. Present worth at lower discount rate, 32,667 divided by the present worth at lower discount rate or the present worth at higher discount rate plus present worth at lower discount rate. So we don't have to consider the sign now. Let us take it as 15. In, so we have to add them. We don't have to consider the sign. That is 32,667 plus, we'll take if you just take 14.99, consider it as 15. It is 15 and uh, then So the, the IRR value is 39.98, it is close to, or if we reduce the digits, it is 39.99, this is the IRR value. So the returns from the project or the marginal efficiency of capital, the rate of return is 39.99, which is higher than the interest rate and the project is feasible. So if you look at the BCR, it is greater than 1, the net present worth is positive and the IRR value is greater than the interest rate that is offered by the banks. So this project is feasible. So there, is, there are built-in formulas for finding out net present worth in Excel. So we, what we have to do is you put an equal to, then type NPV, then you have to put a bracket. So at what percent we find out the NPV, that is 12 percent, type 12, and along with that put the 12 percent, then put a comma. Then we have to uh, take these values. Just take the cell reference of the values of net benefit. Remember, net benefit, that is D2 to D11. Then close the bracket, put an enter. It is 32,666 if I, if I, produce the decimals, it is 32,667. This is what we estimated and the value is 32,667. There is a built-in formula for that. Similarly, IRR, this is net present worth or value. IRR, we can find out IRR also. What you have to do is you put an equal to, then type IRR, then select, a, uh, I mean put a bracket, Select the values. Which values you have to select is 
these net benefit values we select that is D2 to D11 close the bracket here you can make a guess also we need not even you can ignore that just put an enter it is shown as 40 percent because it was close to 40 you reduce the uh, I mean increase the uh, decimal points we can find it is 39.97 since we estimate using some formula and estimate using the built-in formulas there is slight difference but the IRR value is 39.97 so NPV and IRR can be can be uh, directly estimated from Excel so if we consider this project the benefit cost ratio is 1.6 net present worth is 32667 and uh, IRR is greater than the opportunity cost of capital that is the interest rate it is 39.99 and hence the project is feasible. Let me conclude this lecture. In this lecture we have learned the investment analysis or appraisal of projects by estimating and interpreting the undiscounted and discounted measures of project work. Hope now you are confident to make investment decisions and choose among investment alternatives. Thank you.